Hey, good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. My name is Sam Totten here at my HR and welcome to the demo. So today I'm going to be taking you through my HR, but obviously everything you're seeing is pre-recorded. So if you would like a live demo um, after this uh, or you have any questions on the back of it, feel free to reach out to me at sam at myhr.works. So to begin with, what I will do is I will actually take you through the launch pad. Now, there's a couple of important things that I want to go through first before we jump into that. Firstly, with my HR, software is only 50% of what we do. Really, what stands us out in this space is the fact that all of our clients are backed by a team of experts. Now, this team is made up of administrators, advisors, and managers, and they're there to support our clients every single day, answering ad hoc questions for their managers, right through to holding their hands through formal HR processes, disciplinaries, terminations, performance management, you name it. Coupled with that, they also tailor all of the documentation for our clients. Letters of offer, contracts, variations, policies, you name it tailored to the unique requirements of your business, company branding, all administered through the software. Now, the second important thing that I want to remind you about is within my HR, we have three access tiers available to our clients. First of all, we've got a employee self-service tier where if I worked for your business or your organization, I could log on, I can interact with my parts of the employment lifecycle. The next tier up, We've got a manager access tier where the manager of your finance team or your marketing team would be able to see the information uh, of the people that he or she is responsible for. And then finally, we also have an owner access tier where the organizational leaders, company directors, maybe the HR lead for the organization as well, would be able to see all of the people's information um, which is relevant to the business. They can report on different things as well as drill down into personal details. The look, the feel, the format throughout the tiers is exactly the same. There's just less ability as you go down the tiers for individuals to see other people's data. Now, the last thing that I want to remind you about before we jump into it and before we kick on is what I'm gonna show you today is a fully configured account with up-to-date documentation. Now to get there, any new business or organization that comes on board with my HR, they, under, they undertake a six to eight week implementation project. Now, the six to eight week project is carried out by a dedicated implementation manager within my HR, whose sole responsibility is to onboard new businesses, new organizations to my HR. They do all of the heavy lifting for you, um, you know, so th they take care of the project for you. Um, the support is available to you from day one. Don't get me wrong. You know, if, if there's an issue with one of your employees or you, you need an employment contract the day after coming on board to my HR, we will still support, of course. But the six to eight week project, it covers off the following three parts. First of all, account configuration. That's where we're going to take all of your employee data. We're going to upload it into the MyHR portal for you, set up your self-service manager owner access tiers, set up the workflows and configure the software. Very time consuming, better use of our time than it is of yours. The second part is we will do a HR health check on the business. So this is where we're going to go through everything you've got in place for your people, not just contracts, policies, company code of conduct, but everything, you know, um, employee handbook, health and safety. If it's in relation to your people, we will have a look at it. Go through it with a fine tooth bit comb. Anything you're missing in terms of industry best practice or legal, legal compliance, we're then gonna revamp that for you and bring that up to date. Just to make sure that we, you know, from day one of you coming on board to my HR, we set the benchmark. A big part of that health check is a consultation element where we'll actually sit down with you to understand the culture uh, and the unique cadences of your business or your organization and make sure that we align to that. This isn't an off-the-shelf off product. 
This is tailored to the unique requirements of your business. The final part of the implementation project is training. So that's where we run anyone with manager or owner access to MyHR through some training of not only how to use the software, but also how, you know, HR 101s as well, you know, what to look out for, um, upskilling your managers to make sure they know how to contact the team, essentially. Awesome. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you top to bottom, left to right through the launch pad. Down the left hand side, we've got some shortcuts to some, to some frequently used parts of the MyHR platform. I'll come back to those in just a moment. But in the top here, within this banner type format, you've got reminders. So the reminders are going to be along the lines of either system generated reminders or custom reminders. I'll show you where you can customize the reminders very shortly, but the system generated reminders will be things along the lines of employment agreements that are waiting signatures, you know, contracts that are waiting signatures, people that have requested for leave, performance reviews that are due for completion, visas that are expiring, that type of stuff. The people that get these reminders are the employee in question, their manager, and anyone with owner access to. We can also sync these across to your Gmail, your Outlook calendar. As we scroll down, we've got the employee overview. So this is a start of our reporting capabilities, which again, I will touch upon in some more detail very shortly, but this gives you a breakdown of the roles within the business over the next month. Then as you get to the bottom of the launch pad, this is the first of three key ways in which you and your managers can get in contact with our team. The first way is you chat to us through the software. So maybe this is a question that you don't need a burning answer to right here, right now, but you just want to cross check it for your own personal knowledge. Well, you've got a question around sick leave entitlements. Put the question in, you hit submit. Once you hit submit, within three business hours, that's our SLA on response times through the chat function, three business hours, one of the team will come back to you with a response. As you can see here, we've got a few examples of some conversations that regularly take place for my HR clients. And at the top, we've got a my HR client that has requested for a drug and alcohol policy. The team have come back to them asking, um, you know, what are the specifications around this policy? You've then responded, no rehab, no drinking on site ever, standard testing levels. And then within the three business hours SLA, the team have come back to um, our client with where they can find this new policy. And I'll show you where that lives very shortly. Now, the second way you can get in contact with us is the old fashioned telephone. Pick up the phone. The team are available to answer your, you know, your burning questions that you might have. Someone's come into work drunk this morning and you don't know how to deal with it. You pick up the phone and you speak to a real life human being that will help to um, help you to deal with that process compliantly. Finally, um, the last way you can get in contact with us is arrange a virtual meeting. So Google Meets, Zoom, whatever your choice is, they do have to be booked in, but there is the option there if you want a more personal conversation with one of the team. Awesome. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you um, back up to the start of the launch pad and let's imagine that we're at the beginning of the employment life cycle. So you've gone to market and you've you found someone that you want to make an offer to fantastic we well, log on to my char and you click on to this add person function here click onto this and up pops what we refer to as an e-form it's quite literally bulletproof because it's it will prompt you every step of the way but essentially we just need the fundamental information from you regarding this new hire we take care of the rest so you're going to give us their name, the number, the email address, uh, that type of stuff. If you're missing their IRD numbers, date of births, work visas, we're not going to hold you up in a tight labor market. We can come back and do that in retrospect. All the employee can actually do it themselves once they get their self-service portal. But you give us the fundamentals. You tell us what job it is you're adding to the business. Maybe it's a job you've hired for many times 
in the past. You know, you've already hired for um, uh, an accounts administrator many times. You've got the JD already saved with it within the um, within my HR. Or let's say, for instance, you're hiring for uh, hiring for a barista for for the first time ever. Well, we've got over ten thousand job roles saved within the database, so we can actually um, give you a bit of inspiration here of what a JD might look like. You can then come in and edit it if you want to. Or the other option is you pick up the phone, you speak to the team and say, look, we're hiring for a barista for the first time ever. Ever, please could you put a, a job description together for us? You then tell us who the manager is going to be, what department this, going, this person is going into, what type of employment agreement you want them to be on. Again, anything you're not sure about, pick up the phone, speak to the team. Do you want them to have self-service to my HR? Most of the time, yes. Will you be running performance reviews? We'll come to that in just a moment. And will you be managing leave through my HR? Most of the time, yes. Once you then hit submit here, within one business day, our team will then come back to you with the letter of offer, the employment contract, the onboarding checklist, all the relevant policies and paperwork for this new hire, tailored with the company branding, on it and the unique requirements, uh, you know, unique cadences of the business. They'll upload it into the MyHR portal for you, ready for you to give them the once over. Yep, you're happy with them. You approve the documentation. Once you approve the documentation, that then sends an email through to your new employee's email, email address with instructions on how to log on to MyHR. They log on, they view their employment contract. Again, this is what it would look like and it would have your company branding on it and all of the clauses that we've clauses that we've agreed during implementation need to be in this type of roles contract. You then click sign or the employee would then click sign here and they could quite simply use their finger on their phone or they can type their name in. I've done it quite a few times in the past. They then click to finalize. It'll be date stamped and signed by the employee, all legally binding, all captured within the software. Fantastic. I'll come back to the launch pad and we'll jump into the second shortcut here. So the second shortcut is our smart notes um, feature. Now, I won't go into a great detail just yet. I'll show you where this comes um, into pay dividends uh, when we talk more into performance reviews later. But the smart note feature is allowing our clients to capture objective observations that take place on the day to day. So you know, what it's then allowing them to do to do is have a meaningful conversation with their staff members when it comes around to checking in with them or their performance appraisal at the end of the review period. So let's say, for instance, Ashley, I hate to talk into the negative examples, but it's always the one that comes to my mind. So Ashley was late morning. We can tag that as negative and tag that as late. You can also add your own tags to measure the values that you want to um, track. But you hit save and I'll show you where that comes into play very shortly. I will cover off the rest of these shortcuts throughout the, the remainder of the demonstration. What I'll do now is I'll move on to the My People tab. The My People tab is where you get visibility of your workforce and it's your centralized data storage point. So this is where we provide you with the bubble wrap for your business. Down the left hand side, it's broken down by your departments, completely customizable to the terminology you use internally. You've then got the corresponding headcounts for reporting purposes. It's broken down by roles. Again, corresponding headcounts and we keep hold of your inactive employees data for up to seven years as a legal requirement. This would all be um, set up and configured as part of the implementation project, which our dedicated implementation manager would uh, complete for you. However, if you wanted to add new departments moving forward, you could do that using the shortcut. Again, we've got other shortcuts where you can save draft people. Um, you can 
You can actually, uh, we can support from a recruitment perspective as well, writing job advertisements, providing interview questions, advising on salary or wage rates, whole heap of comprehensive support. I'll drill down into the self-service tier in just a moment once I get past the My Calendar tab. What I'll do now is I'll move on to the My Business tab. Here we have the My Business tab. The best way to think about this, this is the command center of your business. And it's the area within the app you can apply company-wide actions and outcomes. You should get very familiar with this part of the app purely because this is where you'll be spending most of your time. We've got a number of tabs within My Business. The first being Reminders. Now, you would have, you'll remember the Reminders banner on within the launch pad that I showed you at the beginning of this demo. This is where you can set custom reminders across your, um, across your business. So we've got the reminders broken down into a number of topics here, but let's give you an example. So let's say you want to remind all of your employees unilaterally that you, that they need to renew their first aid certificate by the end of this month. Well, this would fall under Compliance, what's the title? First aid but he's renewed. You can send an email notification, email reminder to your employees a week or maybe a month or a day in advance. What is it you require from them? We need the completion of this task. You then hit submit and that sends a reminder through to all 30 of your employees that they need to complete this by the end of the month. Likewise, if you wanted to remind your marketing team that they need to watch a culture video and you want it done by within the next couple of weeks, well, you can then again set reminders and this would, you know, fall under training. Please watch video and then you could insert a link to where they would find that video. Send a reminder again whenever you want in advance. What is it you require from them? You need their completion of this task. Hit submit. That sends a reminder through to your marketing team to go in and, and watch that video. We've got some examples already within this demo account of reminders that have um, been set. Again, training videos here. This is the one that I've just added. Importantly, you can mark which ones have been complete and which ones haven't been complete. Further, within this reminders section, you've got the ability for your employees or for yourself to actually fire out uh, or request acceptance from your employees regarding policies. So you'll remember at the beginning of this demo that I showed you the chat around the drug and alcohol policy where a client had asked for a drug and alcohol policy from the MyHR team. This is where that new policy now lives and it has the company branding on it. All ready to go. But importantly, you can request acceptance from your team by hitting this button here, selecting the people that need to see this policy, read and accept it, hit apply. That then sends uh, a notification through to your employees to go in, read this policy and accept it. You get a report to detail how many employees have seen it and accepted, how many haven't. The ones that haven't, you can send a reminder to them. I'll now move on to the documents tab. This is the documents tab. So Think of this as your My HR 
filing cabinet. No more paper, all of your company policies, code of conduct, SOPs, health and safety, handbooks, inductions, they're all going to live here securely in the cloud. Now, these will either be created by our team of experts or you can upload your own. Totally up to you. Here's where you can up, um, include your own folders and upload your own folders. But you can jump in and view the company policies as I've shown you previously and download them, print them off if you, if you need to. Here we have the jobs tab. This is where you can view all of your JDs if you wish. If you need guidance here, you can pick up the phone, speak to the team. The HR team is in place to help you out with templates. We can tailor them or set them up from scratch. Totally up to you. If you wanted to jump in and, and have a go with your own templates, you can add a new job here. Select from the MyHR's database. Again, we've got um, over 10,000 roles saved within the MyHR database for you to choose, choose from. So let's say you wanted a bit of support with what a JD might look like for an accountant. That pops a template for you to work from and you can edit that if you, if you need to. I'll now move across to the reviews tab. Here we have performance reviews. It's at this point I'd actually ask you what you currently do to manage performance and behavior. But um, seeing as there's no one on the other end here, um, I'll have to save that for a live demo. But effectively, the most important part here really is viewing the statuses of your performance reviews. And it's at this point you can see what reviews are ready for joint appraisal, manager appraisal, employee appraisal, which ones have been complete. You could also add a template for a new performance review if you wanted to. Again, always important to remember that as part of the implementation project that we complete for you, a big part of that is our implementation managers un understanding what you currently do around reviews and performance and behavior. Um, and then again, they will make any recommendations on best practice, close up any gaps for you if there are any, and then they'll actually build that within the software for you so it's easy to scale moving forward. But if you did want to add your own template, you have the ability to do that here. So let's say you want to add a template for Ashley. You tell us what the review period is going to be. Is it a year or biannual? Totally up to you. We're just giving you the choice. You can then select from a template, apply the template, and then you've got a skeleton performance review there ready to use. Um, again, if you need any support around this, what a performance um, objective or a goal might look like for a particular role, you pick up the phone and you speak to our team of experts who can guide you with putting this um, development plan in place. I will talk into performance reviews into sorry into performance reviews in some more detail shortly. But now I'll move on to the reports tab. Here we have the reports tab within my business, and this is where you get a dashboard and you can report on a whole heap of different things: lead balances, turnover, demographics, performance review statuses, whole heap of different things. If there's anything missing from this list down the left hand side that you would like to report on, well, my HR has the data. So pick up the phone, speak to the team. We can pull it for you. But let's take leave, for example. And you want to report on leave approved between two certain points. Let's say it was during July. Set the dates generate the report and my HR will generate the report in a CSV file for you. I'll now move on to the My Calendar tab. So the My Calendar tab gives you a snapshot of all of the upcoming important events that are taking place within the business over the next month. So people on leave, leave requests, 
work anniversaries, birthdays, public holidays. So effectively, you get a shared calendar of what's coming up for the business over the next month. What I'll do now is I'll drill down into the self-service portal. Now we're in the self-service portal. I am still in the owner access tier, but the look, the feel, the format throughout the three tiers is exactly the same. There's just less ability for Ashley to see other people's information when she's logged in to a self-service portal. But within the overview, Ashley would be able to see all of her personal details. She could edit them if she wanted to. She's got reminders of upcoming important events for her work life, her leave balances, as you can see, I've done quite a few demos, that's why she's in her minuses. Um, we've got any documents she's recently downloaded, notes as well. Um, this is something that Ashley wouldn't be able to see, and I'll explain why in just a moment. They would actually be stored also within this Manage tab, and that's the part I'll go on to talk about next. So the Manage tab is something that Ashley wouldn't be able to see through her self-service portal, because this is where... Ashley's manager or the business owner would initiate any formal HR process or documentation for this particular employee. It's also where you can see all of the notes that have been left regarding Ashley. So you remember at the beginning of this demo, I showed you the smart note feature and we left a note that Ashley was late this morning. Well, here you can see all of the notes that have been left regarding Ashley throughout her employment with the business. You can filter between what's been happening recently, what's been going well, what's been going badly, what manager's been leaving the notes. You can filter between the tags as well, so you can get a, an idea of how many times Ashley has been late in the last three months, totally down to you, or you know how many health and safety incidents she's had, totally down to you. But what it means is it gives you some objective data to refer to and have a meaningful conversation with Ashley during her check-in or her performance appraisal. Again, I'll show you where that comes back into play in just a moment. But if you needed some additional support regarding Ashley, you know, let's say you needed a salary increase letter. Again, you type in what the new salary is going to be. When is this effective from? Any additional information? Hit submit. And within one business day, the team will then come back to you with the tailored letter going out to Ashley um, with the good news. Also within the Manage tab, you can get support from the team for the other side of um, things, you know, disciplinaries, for example. So let's say Ashley has arrived to work drunk this morning. How would you know this isn't acceptable? Well, she's got a signed employment contract, company code of conduct, and a company policy. What's the nature of the problem? Well, it's serious misconduct. When's the first meeting going to occur? Well, hopefully today. What's the outcome that you're considering? A formal written warning. Once you hit submit, the team then come back to you because it's serious misconduct within four business hours. Now they're gonna come back to you with, first of all, a letter um, and they'll send that out to Ashley inviting her to a meeting, a disciplinary meeting. They're then going to put together a roadmap for you and um, the business owner or anyone with owner access to it to actually see how we're going to get to the next point with Ashley and exactly the process to follow. And then finally, they're going to script the whole meeting for you with notes so you can go into the meeting with Ashley prepared, you know exactly what to say, but importantly, what not to say during that meeting. Again, the support that we, we can provide for your employees is pretty much endless. And the list is, is comprehensive. If there is anything missing from this additional support list, you can simply pick up the phone, speak to the team. We're there to support you. What I'll do now is I'll move on to the documents tab. So the documents tab is where all of Ashley's personal documents and folders will be stored. Again, you can give or deny Ashley access to any of these. 
it's to totally down to your discretion. Ashley can also upload her own folders if she wants to. But this is where all of those company policies, maybe disciplinary notes, references, police checks, all of that type of stuff could be stored within my HR. I'll now move on to performance reviews. You'll remember from the beginning of the demo that I showed you the smart note feature. So that was the first of three key performance review tools that we have available to our clients. The second tool that we have is the check-in. Now this has the same functionality as the smart note feature. Key difference, whatever you leave here is viewable to the employee as well. The check-in, the idea of this is to record those monthly, weekly, quarterly meetings that you're having with your staff. How are things going? Are you enjoying my management style? How's your training going? And effectively what it means is you've got a, a log of a meeting taking place on that weekly basis. So here you can leave the notes meeting went well, automatically tagged as check-in for you. You save that and then the, you've then captured that monthly, weekly, quarterly meeting. The final tool that we have is the appraisal itself. So everything you're seeing here is customizable to the performance reviews that you run internally. Again, as part of implementation, we will help to build these out. We will we'll be keen to understand the performance reviews that you currently do. Again, make any recommendations on what we see as best practice and then build that within the software for you so it's easy to scale. But yep, again, important to reiterate that everything you see is customizable to the performance reviews that you want to run internally. Maybe you prefer the word goals rather than performance objectives or KPIs for your sales employees. Again, we can change that. The performance review period, again, is completely customizable to how you want uh, the periods in which you want to run your performance appraisals. But the performance objectives, these are the binary expectations of the employee within their role. What are they there to do? Skills and competencies are the how to the above, less tangible. And then the personal development plan, this is the why. You know, why your employees getting out of bed in the morning? What are they looking um, to work towards? And it's, you know, an important part to retain good employees. When it comes to completing the performance review, first of all, the manager gets a notification through to say, they need to go in and complete the appraisal. They then click on to complete cycle. Up pops a rating scale. Again, customizable to how you want to rate your employees. One to five, strongly agree, strongly disagree, above or below target. This one's gone for above and below target. And you can go, come through and rate Ashley whether she is below, on, or above target. And then the personal development plan is purely a yes or no answer. Was this achieved or was it not? And who was the person responsible? You can then list three things that went well, or maybe four things that went well, and three things that didn't go so well. But this is where you streamline the whole process from the smart notes that you've been diligently keeping across the review period. So maybe you've got a hunch that Ashley has got a punctuality problem and you can see all of the times that she's been late. You can then come in and edit that note if you needed to. It saves you having to go through your emails, try and memor uh, memorize things. It's all there at a click of your button and the, the notes that have been left by all of the managers regarding Ashley. You then leave any additional comments, hit submit. Once you hit submit, the employee then gets a notification through to complete their part of the process. Again, they come through, they rate themselves out of above or below target or whatever your chosen rating scale is. And they, importantly, they cannot see their manager's scores just yet. But they go through, rate themselves again, yes or no. There's three things that went well, three things that didn't go so well. Additional comments. This is where we see a lot of management feedback. Once they've done that, they hit submit and then the manager and the employee will find a time to sit down together, hopefully face to face, if not virtually, go through compare and contrast the results. So this is what the manager and the employee joint appraisal view looks like.
as you can see, you've got the employees score and then the managers score. And importantly, this is where the employee and the manager will sit down and discuss why there are any differences or discrepancies between where they view themselves at. Once they've done that, they then agree on a final rating, go through, identify things they want to repeat in the next review period, and maybe things that they want to avoid. They leave a final overall rating, additional comments, they then submit the final review that's saved against the employee self-service portal. They can download it and print it off if they want to. But importantly, you can see from a top level all of the statuses, where the reviews are at, and you can, if you need to, chase managers up for uh, completing their performance reviews. I'll now move on to the leave management tool. Okay, so this is where you can record leave for Ashley. If Ashley was in her self-service portal, she could log on. This would say apply for leave. She would click on to apply for leave and tell us what type of leave it, it was that she wants to take. In this instance, it's annual leave and she wants the 26th of September off. Ashley happens to be an Australian employee, so this is automatically populated to 7.6 hours. If this was a New Zealand employee, it would say eight. Any additional comments, Ashley would then hit save or submit. Once she hits submit, that will send a request through to her manager. Her manager will take a look at the My Calendar to work out if we have the headcount that day to give her the day off. If we do, they'll approve the leave and that will automatically deduct from Ashley's leave balances. You can report on leave balances, accrued leave, um, different type of leave um, metrics through the reporting tab I showed you earlier. Uh, I now show you the reminders functionality on an individual level. So the reminders tab within the self-service section is where you can set reminders on an individual level. Let's take an example. Let's say you wanted to remind Ashley to update her timesheet before the end of the week. You tell us when it is you need this um, task to be completed by. What type of, or what category does this reminder fall under? Well, it's other. The title will be timesheet. Please update your timesheet <clears throat> for the end of the week. And then send a reminder to Ashley the day before. What is it you require from her? We need the, her completion of this task. You hit submit. Once you hit submit, that will set a reminder for Ashley to complete her timesheets um, before, before Friday. So that was pretty much everything I planned to show you as part of the demonstration. Thank you for watching. Um, and if you have any questions on the back of this or you would like a live demo where we can hash out any questions at the same time, please reach out to me at sam at myhr.works.